Hello, everyone. My name is Amy Wong, and I'm the founder of Dream Writers, a self-publishing platform for young creative writers and artists. Our mission is to spark creativity in kids of all ages and delight the world with their stories. And this is our very first podcast where we will be using this time to explore different topics ranging from creativity to education to writing and publishing. And this is why I am so excited to have our very first guest, Melissa Lee, to join us. Hi, Melissa. Hello, Amy. (laughs) So a brief introduction. Uh, Melissa is the founder of UK Education Garden, a Cambridge-based education consultancy that offers one-stop and bespoke services to international students in the UK. She's also a management consultant, as well as a publisher of two books. So I'm so pleased to have her here. And um, I uh, thought we would start by just uh, starting with your journey. Can you share a little bit about how you uh, came to start the UK Education Garden? Yes, thank you so much for introducing me and inviting me to be here. Um, Back in 2009, I started my um, master's degree at the University of Cambridge, where I met a lot of MBA and EMBA students. And they are all mature students. They have families. And once they study in Cambridge, they just fall in love with this place. And they want to send their kids here. Since I've been studying education for quite some time, and... They just trust me. They bring their kids to me and ask me to, to send them to a good school in the UK. So that's how I started my own, yeah, my own consultancy. I see. Which is, which is quite interesting. And then those MBA students now becomes most of, yeah, they become my friends and they refer quite a lot of um, families to me. So our consulting, our consultancy mainly work with um, those EMBA or MBA families. Ah, okay. Ah, um, and so can you take it a step back and tell us how you kind of got into education and how, why you fell in love with this particular field? Oh, that's a very good question. My story is pretty much like a Chinese author. He was a medical doctor, just like my father. And originally, when I was small, I would like to become a medical doctor or a politician. Mm. But my father constantly remind me not to go for that. And the next available uh, option, which I love to do is education. And that's why um, when I finished my A-level, I've told myself not to choose, um, not to choose GPA, which at that time is about government um, politics and, and management, but I, I swap it to education. Um, it, it was a difficult decision, but I need to listen to my parents because they will worry about me if I become a politician. And um, yeah, that's that's why I am now an educator, uh-huh. which I, I find it quite fulfilling as well. For the past 15 years, I've been helping a lot of kids and their families, which, is, see. which is quite quite nice. It's, it's like being a doctor. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of um, people would feel the same way in that um, their parents may have a certain uh, direction that they want their kids to follow. Um, but mm-hmm. ultimately, um, I think uh, it's up to all of us individually to chart our own path. Um, so uh, given your experience uh you know, in Hong Kong, growing up in Hong Kong, studying here, and then working in Ooh. the UK for almost 15 years. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the differences you see in education in Hong Kong versus the UK? Um, yes, I think UK is much more focused on creativity and arts. Um, having been a student in both Asia and and Europe, I just can tell there's a very massive difference between the education systems in different countries. Personally, I I really like the UK system myself. Mm. uh, i just give you an example. I love my kids to learn Chinese. I I did think about whether I should send them back to Hong Kong and I've relocated back to Hong Kong because I can... Yeah, the kids could learn solid Chinese in Hong Kong. But then when I think of creativity and art, 
or sports element, I love them to stay in the UK. Mm. Because this is something I don't, I just don't think Asian culture could, um, I, how do I put it? I, I think UK is better. Let me put it this way. <laughs> Um, I think um, a lot of Hong Kong um, education, education uh, or teachers have has been adapting the UK cultures or the UK systems. Um, I'm sure it's now getting much better. Mm. So, so you talked about your preference towards a more creative based education. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about why you think it's so important? It is important because when you can Google everything mm. on your fingertips, and knowledge is just so easy to get. I think creativity is the future. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I didn't think about it that way because um, I guess in the past when we were growing up, uh, we we're taking tests and exams, and uh, a lot of it uh, wasn't available so easily on the internet. Um, but uh, kind of looking towards the future when we have to solve such unprecedented issues in the world, it requires creative thinking. Um, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, the, the world is getting much more complicated. For example, the COVID has changed the world in the past 12 months. If we don't have any creative method, I don't know how we could solve the problem. Mm. Because there's nothing in the previous book, not too much that we, we could follow. Yeah, that's very Except true. That, which we've been experienced for the past 12 months is not a good thing to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, interesting. So uh, I wanted to maybe uh, switch uh, course a little bit because I understand um, that you've published two books before. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what the contents of those books are and what inspired you to write them? Uh, the first book which I published was back in 2006. Um, both me and Maggie, Maggie was another co-author, we went to different parts of the world to, interv to interview the world famous children's author, mm -hmm. which is what, what was a wonderful experience. Oh, you interviewed other authors. We interviewed, yes. Oh, yes. I see. Maggie and I interviewed a lot of famous authors. Uh -huh. uh, uh, we have a professor in Taiwan, uh -huh. a professor in Germany, a professor in England, um, so we cover Hong Kong, Taiwan, mainland China, and Western countries. Mm -hmm. all about mm -hmm. Did you see a certain pattern um, in your interviews with all these different authors? They all love writing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and they all love something. Uh, obviously, they love children and mm -hmm. they love writing. Mm -hmm. They also trying to be creative. I see. Teacher, so that they can inspire the next generation. Uh huh. Um, and um, when you say, just picking up on what you just said, um, when they try to be creative in the way they teach, um, what, what kind of things do you notice? Um, well, I've noticed, I, I've been to their lessons. Uh -huh. the, the reason why I now settle down in Cambridge, because there's a good um, university here, which also offers children's literature. I haven't got a chance to study it because I'm very busy. Uh -huh. But um, what I've noticed is I've been joining different types of lessons in Cambridge or in the surrounding area, like London or in Durham. And what I've noticed is all those creativity um, or creative writing teacher, they, are, they just let you do whatever you want. Or mm -hmm. even in writing, they give you the uh, freedom to do it. Of course, they will guide you to the right direction. But to start with, they give you the freedom to do something you like. I see. I see. This is so how, um, I'm changing, uh, teaching my kids uh, as well. I want them to do something they like, especially when they are small. Yeah. So it's that um, idea of not sort of restricting them to to. Mm do certain things um but, but allowing them to explore and experiment mm -hmm. yes um and so uh 
in your uh, teaching and consulting and even writing your books, do you see um, an interest or more of an interest in kids to write and publish their own stories? I'm getting a, a lot more interest for students who, who love writing. Yes, and we're just so lucky in, in the UK. We have a lot of good postgraduate schools. Um, you can do one year creative writing. So um, I'll point them in that direction. Mm. Do you think um, technology has a, um, a role in kind of uh, getting kids more interested in, the, in publishing? Because in the past, yes. it's always been adults kind of being the, the authors and publishers of books. Of course, yeah. Yeah. We, sometimes my kids want to um, want to write something, and I would I would just use my phone to take some pictures of their own creating and just put it in the computer, and they get a print uh -huh. myself. So it is quite it's quite it's quite easy now nowadays, and there are also a lot of platforms which could allow you to do that. Mm, right, right. Um, and uh, how does writing help with cultivating uh, kids' creativity? Writing is a solid part of the kids' learning. I think if we could integrate creativity with the writing, actually the kids would, would learn more vocabularies. Mm. And they will also enjoy their, their learning a, a lot more. Mm, mm, mm. Whatever they want when they are small. Although when you're older, you can't. <laughs> like my father, don't get into politics. <laughs> I see. So rather than, um, let's say, uh, having the, the kid um, learn like grammar or spelling through workbooks or things like that of that nature. It's allowing them to explore a subject that they're interested in. And then through that, then they can learn these mechanical things afterwards. Yes, I agree. Yes. Yeah. And even when they are writing, they know that if they're going to publish it, they will suddenly care about how they write it in a better way. Mm. Because they know it's part of their portraits. It's part of their their own work right and they will suddenly become oh how do I put this word correctly uh-huh it's, it's different from the idea of, of sharing oh I'm sorry it's, go ahead <laughs> it's different from doing a piece of homework which yeah. they were oh it's just a piece of homework uh -huh. but, but when you tell them oh we're going to publish this can we do it a little bit better they suddenly ask you oh how do I spell how do I spell this or how do I spell that how do I put the sentences into right order uh-huh. So, so it's the idea of being able to, to share and entertain others that maybe makes them more conscious of their own writing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's all you're right. It's also making them more eager to learn mm. to express themselves in a much better way. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, well, my last question for you is um, if you had any advice to give, um, you know, kids who may be a little bit, um, you know, not a little bit scared of writing or maybe kids who like to write um, in general <laughs> to publish. Yes. What, 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 what advice would you give? I think it's important for them to go to the nature. For example, you can you can bring them to the forest. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have a lot of forest school here in the UK, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Or bring them to uh, the green area, mm -hmm. bring them to the seaside so that they could join the nature, they connect with the nature. And then uh, what I've noticed is they, they will have much more creative ideas when they are coming back. Oh, I see. So kind of use the environment uh, as a source of inspiration. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. I, to kids, this is something um, they, they like and it's good for their health. <laughs> and um, Also, it will give them a vital message that they need to love our world. Mm. Because when they grow up, um, they are going to control our world. Right. They will be in the next generation. So I want them to love the environment. Yeah. We start when they were small. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Great. Um, I think that's a really positive message and very encouraging as well. 
Hello, I would like to show you some examples of how I use different types of toys, musical instruments, and books to teach my kids creativity at home. My son loves trains. So in my house, we got a lot of trains and train track. What I've been doing is when they were very small, they started to build up all the train track themselves. And I will introduce you all different types of train from different parts of the world, like from France, Germany, Japan, or China. And he also loves drawing different types of trains. And this is one of his creation when he was three years old. Let me just quickly show you. So can you see the different types of train track? And he put it all together as a very, very big photo. It reminds you of a very famous Chinese picture. And sometimes we will use the recycled material as well. Look at this. This is also a little train. And there are also some really creative books which I've been showing and reading to them. For example, this one. I'm sure you, you will know. And um, it's all about the ocean. And in the same version, um, that one, Hoidaya is a Chinese book. I think originally it's from Japan. And in the UK, we can also buy a similar one about ocean. And it has different layers. They are so creative. And here, we have uh, 104. Uh, there are different... There are different homes on in different floors. And I also found this book very, very creative. It gives them a lot of ideas about building a house or being creative. Last but not least, let's just show you two more books. This is a very creative book about the Chinese New Year. And the kids could mix and match to choose their corsets. So even learning uh, what to wear is part of the creative activities every day, every morning. And th this book is a very nice one as well. And the author trying to, to tell us that you can grow a balloon tree. So, um, well, Melissa, thank you so much for your time. I, I know, uh, you know, you're a very, very busy person. I, I think you're working on your third book, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I want to thank you so much again for your time and for sharing uh, your thoughts and insights on uh, creativity and uh, its role in education. Thank you so much, Amy. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye.